Hello Sagittarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Sagittarius March 2022 Astrology Must Knows Horoscope Forecast. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com for the interface for all the free goodies I make for you each month. You can also click on the little more button with the arrow to the bottom right of this video to reveal links directly to all of the things that I make for you. If you are a Sagittarius Sun like me or a Sag Moon or Rising or even Mercury, Venus, Mars, whatever you watch for, this report is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Sag, also like me, um, so basically December 15th through the rest of the sign or around 23 degrees or so through the rest of the sign, I also suggest you watch my Capricorn video because you, we, very Cusby people, have a more complex read and you will benefit from watching both. Okay, so what's going on in March? There's a lot to celebrate and some things to look out for as usual, so we're going to just break it down here and go into lots of detail. The first big must know is that we do have more sweet aspects compared to salty ones this month. So that does give a little flavor to the month that leans towards the positive. Um, however, we do have a couple of pretty nasty aspects that I, I do not like them. They're challenging. They hopefully will be quick and will, everything will be fine. And they're not two outer planet clashes, which is great because those are the, the, the really hard ones, right? But they're definitely things to watch out for. So I'm doing a special report of the top eight aspects of this month, including those two to watch out for at the end of this video. All right, so just stay tuned if you wanna have more details. And if you like to have all of the notable aspects delivered into your inbox one month early, then definitely sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com. Okay, so that's the first must know. Second must know is that starting mid-March, we are actually back in eclipse season. Our little break between the eclipses, between that massive change and the anxiety, the foreboding and the excited anticipation and all of the drama for better and worse that is eclipse season, we are starting to step out of that little uh, break and starting to go into a time where our karma and our dharma are activated in very big ways. We're in the midst of a Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle. That's one that is not always the easiest for Sagittarius energies, but it doesn't mean that wonderful things can't happen from it. And it's and remember, we have so much more than just whatever sign you're looking for. So even if um, even if the uh, eclipses are not in a great aspect for Sagittarius, you have other placements besides your placement in Sag, okay? But do know that it might make it be a little bit more challenging to work with the lessons of clearing the negative karma and stepping into your highest expression or not, right? We don't have to claim that as a problem. You can just go in that you're going to it with thinking and intending you're going to be receptive to the lessons of the universe and that you're going to do your inner work and maybe it could be even easier for you than it would be for someone who has it in a more favorable placement because of your attitude and your inner work. And that's definitely why I like to focus on perspective and inner work because that can change how we experience things. But in any case, look out for big news, glimpses into what the changes might be, big hellos, big goodbyes, trajectory shifts, thinking you're going in a certain direction and all of a sudden, wow, okay, I guess you're doing this now. That is going to start to heat up starting mid-March and will get stronger through all March through the end of April when we have the first eclipse, the second eclipse is in May, and eclipse season will carry over even into early June. Okay, so just enjoy the silence <laughs> and the peace until then because things are going to get really busy. But some of the busyness can also be super positive and super exciting and that's what I want to spend more time focusing on because my most favorite must know to talk about is that the tides are going out, finally. If you've been tracking my work or tracking the retrogrades independently, you know that we've had a Venus retrograde that has put us going inwards and backwards for a while. There are lots of wonderful ways Venus retrograde can and will and has manifested, but it definitely is more of an internal backwards, inwards focus. And it's, it's now time for action and activity and forward movement and oomph and excitement and all of the things that Sagittarius loves the most are going to start to get activated now. And these Pisces placements that we've been experiencing are not the fave of the Sagittarius placement. And I know you've been feeling it. We've had Jupiter in Pisces. We've had the Sun in Mercury now, um, you know, in Pisces. And it's it's not been, um, 
It's not as easy for Sagittarius because Pisces squares our placement. But again, I always view a challenging aspect as a chance for us to go into our superhero mode. As I'm recording this, all of the Pisces energies are, are coming in a very interesting way, a very intense way. And yet here I am with you recording this, getting everything done in superhero mode, and you have that opportunity. So maybe you are seeing yourself be on one side of the coin, which could be you're feeling sorry for yourself, some things are happening, you might be entering victim mode, which equals your disempowerment, or you could be flipping the switch and saying, okay, I'm going to empower myself with a positive attitude, an accountable attitude, and stop making excuses or blame and activate your highest expression and the, the best versions of yourself. So, you know, Pisces gives us that opportunity to sort of wow, okay, how, how are you gonna work this, right? So hopefully you're making, you're leaning towards the positive, and if you're not, maybe after we're talking about this, maybe now you can. So when I talk about the tides going out, first of all, big must know, March 3rd through April 27th is our big open window. This window is even of more importance because Mars goes into retrograde at the latter part of the year, and its shadow period starts in September. So we only have two periods, March 3rd through April 27th and June 19th through August 21st, where the planet or the stars are completely free from personal planet retrogrades and they are shadow periods. If you've been tracking this for a while, you'll know this yourself. If you're new to this, I'll tell you right now. In the retrograde times, it's a time when the tides are coming in. It's not a time that has good long-term um, pushing out of activity. You might experiment and, and get lucky because it is a time for that, but it's sort of a, you know, a very internal retrospective energy where you deal with things closer to home, closer, closer to your being, closer, you know, to your physical body. Um, but March 3rd through April 27th, June 19th through August 21st, the tides are going out. This is the time when launches, new businesses, engagements, weddings, moves, new jobs, um, new aspects of your business, book launches, any kind of launch, bringing your life's work out, your, your big project, claiming something that you want to become. Let's say you've always wanted to be an artist, claiming I'm an artist and taking action on that, showing the world this is what you're doing. This is the time for the open launch period. This is the time for March and there's a lot of reason to celebrate. It might start feeling like I'm, I'm likening this month, the course of the beginning towards the end of the month, as the process of a woman going into labor, okay? If you're a mama and you've had this experience, then you'll really, really understand, or if you're a, a you know, a, a person who has a father or a father figure that, that has witnessed, or someone else that has witnessed this process, then you'll, you'll understand this very, very well, okay? When the labor pains start, you know something's going to happen, right? A baby is going to come out either way, right? But it hasn't happened yet. You're going through the labor and the whole month of March is like the labor. And the more you get towards the end, the more the obvious signs of something happening, like the baby coming out, are going to come out, okay? So if you feel like you're trying to do something in the beginning of March and it's like, hey, the green light's on, let's do it, and it's still moving a little slowly, remember we still have those Pisces placements dominating. Um, and then as the month moves on, things start moving into Aquarius, which is very favorable for Sagittarius. Towards the end of the month, we start getting into Aries, which is even more favorable for Sagittarius. So our time is coming. It's just going to take a little bit more into March possibly to see that for sure. Okay, so if it seems like it's starting off slowly, that would be why. So, some things to note. We do have a lot of focus and a big boom in your money sector because we've got Venus and Mars conjunct in Capricorn and they're both going to cross over Pluto. We'll talk about that a little more later, but I wanna let you know now that this is for all early, middle, and late degree placements. This boom is in your house of money, finances, income, and that can be quite amazing. You can make a, a like life-changing amount of money. Or you could have other money news that is less positive and super intense. Pluto, you never know what you're gonna get there, but there will be intensity in love, money, self-esteem, self-sufficiency, income, 
something big is happening there, okay? So we've got that going on. Then those planets are going to, or um, Venus and Mars are going to move from Cap into Aquarius. And there is beautiful for us, okay? Then we'll have the um, sun, not the sun. We're going to have um, Venus, Mars, and Mercury in Aquarius. So three personal planets making a 60 degree angle for Sagittarius's means that opportunities will abound like crazy. And Sag is like a lot of things, but one of the things Sag is love the most are options, right? We love to have options and sometimes we don't even like to actualize options because it might forego other options. We rather have all the options out and we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. We love the feeling like everything is possible and that all these things are building and growing around us that we could possibly do, right? So with the retrogrades, you might have started to feel a little bit hemmed in. That is not a thing that Sagittarius like to be. We do not need, like to be physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally hemmed in, right? We like to have full, prolific expression and opportunities at any time. And whenever we're hemmed in, it makes us feel uncomfortable. Not to say it's not good for us sometimes. And like in January and February, you could have been really productive because of that hemming in. But the little racehorses, saggy racehorses, want to run. And as these planets start click, click, clicking into Aquarius, you're going to be able to do that. So it's very exciting. Important thing to remember about the 60 degree angles is that they are the planet of opportunity. I call them the, the, um, the ingredients on a counter uh, placement because you could have a delicious pot pie um, ingredients list on your, on your counter or the actual ingredients. But if you don't turn it into the pot pie, they'll rot there on the counter. So while it will be positive in the way that just feeling like you have options feels really good, especially to a Sag, if you want the time to pass and things to actually actualize and not just fizzle, then you might have to do something. But the good news is that taking action is very well supported, especially as the month goes on. All right, so friendships, social connections, internet-based projects, launches for books or blogs or anything techy, bring your business online, teaching online, anything having to do with that, travel, trips, short-term travel, long-term travel, short-distance travel, long-distance travel, everything is on the table to be fully accentuated for Sagis at this time. And if you're not going places, you might very well be planning to go places, okay? And if you're going to plan to go places, March and April is a great time to plan to go places mid-June th through the end of August, all right? That's what I would be doing. Um, and I will be doing is making my plans in that time for that other open window because those are points of clarity that we have um, in this year of retrograde inward and backward focus. Sagis also have a tremendous opportunity to change how we communicate. All right, Sagis, especially if your Mercury is also in Sag, tend to be prolific expressors, right? You get together with your Sag friends and you talk, 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 and you get all excited and you're exhausted afterwards because you burn out because you're so prolifically expressing and beaming off of each other and it's exciting, right? So you will have a chance to make your communication be fine-tuned. You'll have a chance to expand it through writing or speaking or through fine-tuning it to make it more efficient and effective. And that's a long-term opportunity. Something else that is a big must-know is that in the short term and the longer term, Sagis have their home and family sector very much aspected. As we have the Pisces placements, like the sun moving through Pisces, and then of course the other planets will follow at some point, it's focused on home and family and home business and home-based business. and and housing and real estate and those kind of things. That's brought up in the short term and it's brought up in the long term. We've had Jupiter moving through there, expanding those possibilities, bringing focus on the home and family, and, um, and that will continue. And actually, we'll get, to, we'll get to something else about Jupiter that's very exciting, but I don't wanna forget something I wanted to tell you. This month, we have our new astrological year beginning, March 20th. We'll talk about more when we talk about the important dates when I go through the calendar and give you the dates in a row. But one of the best times to do a vision board, seed planting, 
bursting with everything new around March 20th, the sun gets into Aries. And when the sun is in Aries, it trines our placement. So as the placements move into Aries, they're going to make the most favorable aspect in all of astrology, the 120 degree angle, to kiss our Sag placements, okay? So that's very exciting. And bigger than that, what's also going to happen is that in May, Jupiter is going to get into Aries. But the reason why we have to talk about this now is because starting at the beginning of March, we're only 10 weeks out from Jupiter moving into Aries. And when you have an outer planet, you know, you hear me talk about these cusps all the time. I talk about the late degree cusps. We talk about, you know, things being in two places at once and activating. You could be standing one foot on the sand and one foot on the concrete and you are both, or you could be standing one foot in the water and one foot on the sand. You're both in the land and you're on the water. That's a, that's a good way of seeing it. And so Jupiter has one foot in Pisces, on the water, literally, right? and one foot in fire, Aries. So when it moves in to Aries in May, wow. Sag energies were just going to blaze and this will be a very welcome relief. Things that had slowed, that had seemed like they're just not possible, international dreams of doing things, you know, when everything got shut down again, um, anything having to do with saggy pursuits, writing, speaking, publishing, spiritual processes and, and groups, international connections and travel, things that may have been shut down with Jupiter moving through Pisces, when Jupiter gets out, and as we're getting closer here, you might start seeing signs of that, it's very hopefully going to blow back open. All right, so that is very, very, very good news. And Jupiter will then make a trine with all of our Sag placements between 2022 and 2023. Some of us will get double dippings and triple dippings um, as it goes retrograde and direct, but Jupiter in Aries is going to be much better and one of the most favorable placements for us possible. So look forward to that. So now is still a time to kind of like dot your I's and cross your T's and get everything in a row, get your backlog fixed up, get all the things repaired and worked out so that you can be ready for your prolific expression, you can be ready for your prolific travel, and all of the things that Sagis love most. All right, so when Jupiter moves into Aries, like I said, it's actively in the fourth house, but it's starting to flavor the fifth house. It's actively in Pisces, but it's starting to flavor Aries because 10 weeks, it's very, very strong. And you might've even felt this in January, starting to be in February, starting to get stronger in March. In that transition of its movement from Pisces to Aries, it's affecting both placements. And that is going to bring the fifth house alive for Sages, the house of creativity, children, your bucket list, um, romance and love. All of that is going to be very, very activated and you're likely going to start feeling that occur now, partly because the sun is going to get there, but partly because Jupiter is getting closer and it's saying, hey, I'm coming for you and this is your time and you're going to see um, signs of the good stuff ahead. So not only is it the month that we have the Astrological New Year beginning, we also have the Astrological New Year kickoff party, which is March 31st into April 1st, which is the new moon in Aries. And this is exciting for everyone. It's an amazing time of seed planting when the universe is especially receptive to everyone's intentions and desires. And it's especially positive and beneficial for fire signs. So all fire signs get extra kisses from this um, with this new moon and it does have some energies of a black moon. A black moon is a second new moon in a sign or calendar month. It's going to be a black moon technically in some time zones and not the other ones, but I think the energy will carry over for everybody. So that gives it extra power, extra expansion, extra seed planting um, energies and goodies. So like I said, that's good for everyone. It's especially good for fire signs and amongst the fire signs, if you have a placement, so if you're a Sag placement or if you have any other fire placement that is close to 11 degrees, you will get even more of a close kiss and notable positive outcome from that. So we'll say anywhere between six and 16 degrees of Sagittarius or another fire sign. And the closer to 11 degrees, the more um, those extra new moon goodies. And those goodies for everybody, regardless of what depth you experience it, that those are in effect not just now, but for the next 13 moon cycles. 
as well and the next whole astrological year. So now let's talk about the eight most important aspects of this month and drill down into that. Okay, so in March 2022, we do have more sweet aspects than salty ones, and we do have this beautiful open period where it's a great time to make big decisions and things that are very monumental might come to you, but it's also a time where you can conjure and plan and um, take big steps. And this is really important because we only have one more such period this year because once Mars retrograde shadow starts to take over in September, we're going to spend the rest of the year in a shadow period, okay? So this period between around March 3rd and April 27th is a very action-oriented time. So keep that in mind. But we're going to go through some notable aspects. Now, if you'd like to have a more complete list of the aspect, the date, what you can expect from them, them delivered into your inbox one month early, definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter where you will get exactly that report delivered to your inbox one month early. But we're just going to touch on a couple of these here for March 2022. All right, so the first thing we have here is one of these Saturn aspects. Now remember Saturn aspects, like everything in astrology, like everything in life, can have a dual aspect, but because it's a conjunction, these can kind of go either way. It's not a sweet aspect or a salty aspect per se, it's one that could go either way. And Saturn can bring harshness, but Saturn can bring accomplishment. Okay, so we've got Mercury, which at this point is here. Okay, now the second thing is March 3rd, and this is a big deal. This is when Venus and Mars and Pluto, so Venus, Mars, Pluto combination will all be together. And that's pretty intense. We know Pluto rules birth, death, transformation, rebirth. Sometimes the death is um, literal. Sometimes it's uh, figurative, but there's definitely transformation afoot. And we've got the, you know, male and female energies, our action, our just money, love, how we use our energy, everything is all coming together. And that can be for better or worse. So major transformation is afoot. This is an amazing launch time for business collaborations, things like that. And also um, a time to be cautious. When these energies get together, particularly Mars and um, Pluto, people who might be on edge already can, can blow up in not a good way. So there's there's blowing up in a good way, like, wow, something goes viral. Or um, or there's like tempers flare, anger issues. So if you are in a situation where you don't feel safe in your circumstances, this is definitely a time to be in a safe place because volatility will run high. And, you know, you definitely need to know about that. So that that's that's intense for better or worse, but in the sign of Capricorn here, we've definitely got a lot of business potential, financial potential, um, all coming together in the love, um, money, work, that kind of thing. Then March 5th, we have the Sun and Jupiter getting together. These will come to be at the same degree. And this, this again is one that could be for better or worse. Um, the challenging side of this can bring some confusion, some disillusion, some, you know, betrayal, reaches to security, things like that. On the plus side, it can be highly creative um, and highly um, spiritually transformational. Then we have this beautiful full moon at 27 degrees of Virgo. So anyone who's close to 27 degrees of an earth or water sign will get special kisses from that. Um, we'll say between 22 and 29 degrees of an earth or water sign. And, um, and plus there are two great aspects. So that means not just those people who I just mentioned will get extra kisses. Everyone in the zodiac, every position can get extra kisses because this full moon is blessed with two amazing aspects at the same time. Then we've got a little bump here and Let's see, so Venus is going to come, this Venus here is going to square Uranus, and a square is a challenging aspect, so money, love can get a little Uranus surprise. Usually that's an uncomfortable surprise, but I have seen situations where that's brought in like a crazy love situation in a good way. Um, I've seen where 
something could come in and be jostling at first, but it could actually be positive, but expect surprises in love and money at that time. And then we've got the Astrological New Year, right? Astrological New Year always feel, feels more like a new year to me than January 1st. Um, but we've got this beautiful time, and this is a great time for vision boards. Vision boards are where you either virtually or on paper, like cut out magazine or other things, affirmations, pictures of essences that you want to bring for the year. The universe is especially receptive to your intentions and your wishes and your um you know what you're working on at this time plus you've got we've got an extra boost with mercury making a conjunction with the great benefic um jupiter so that's a very 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 expansive and that will be worked into our whole um astrological new year from march 20th to around march you know of 2022 until that time in 2023 so this is a really big big boost big time for planting seeds wonderful time for launches making big decisions things like that we are also going to have the influence on March 22nd of Mars square Uranus. Okay, so we know that Venus came and did this. You know, Mars and Venus are traveling closely together at this time. And then Mars will square Uranus. And that one is a little bit similar to this Mars and Pluto, where you kind of got to watch this one. It could be a little more dangerous accidents, you know, jolts in not a good way. You have to be more careful. Don't do extra weight at the gym on this day. Don't, you know, not be present when you're lifting weights or when you're driving or walking on a ladder, you know, if there's some kind of dangerous activity, I would avoid it at this time if you can. And then um, people can also behave unexpectedly. So just kind of watch yourself, tune into your intuition. It's a good day to, to, to really just keep the distractions low so you can use your psychic feelers to navigate around any potential issues. Then we end off with this um, really nice new moon in Aries kickoff of the, this is basically the New Year's, Astrological New Year kickoff party. So we have the New Year on the 2021st time, but then this is like the big party where the energies are really strong. And this is another great time for a vision board, setting intentions, you know, brainstorming. And this is also in general, March is a fantastic time for making plans for the future, for moves, um, any kind of commitments, contracts, buying new, you know, big things, selling things, remodels, anything, um, engagements, weddings, all of that is really great in March and really has a lot of strong energy through the end of April for all of that positive momentum. Okay, so if you want more dates and what you might see from them, then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for the free email newsletter. They're right on the front page and you'll get a welcome letter that will have an archive link that will get you access to anything that I've sent and you can go deeper into what may be coming in March. Okay, so I've given you lots to work with to help you make the most of the energies this month and to help you understand the energetic patterns at work and play. And if you'd like more resources, I've got all of these here. You can additionally go to the little more button, the little arrow underneath the bottom right of the video, click on that, and all of the links that I'm giving you here will be clickable, right? So if you're looking for reading options, including a beautiful, very detailed 45 minute audio of your birth chart for $33 from my brilliant husband, you can find that at AnnieBClarity.com. You can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, sign up for my free email newsletter. This is where you can access running a free birth chart. This is where you access my 28 day in-depth virtual coaching program called Shine for free. This is also where you'll find tons of blogs and you get lots of other perks for being on my newsletter list. If you're looking for written horoscopes by me, always up a month early, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. If you haven't seen this site, go to it. It is so beautiful. We've got me and my team have lots of amazing astrology inspired blogs and healthy living blogs. We've got hypnosis for all the signs. We've got healing frequencies for all the signs. I've got the written horoscopes that I write. We have yoga for all the signs. So it's just a very beautiful, comprehensive site. If you're looking for free courses on how to manifest money and um, wellness, you can go to loomlife.com, my school, Luminous Life Multiversity, L-U-M-L-I-F-E. 
You can also find my astrology education courses here, including my behemoth of a master course called Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course, which you can fully utilize even if you don't want to be a professional astrologer, but it certainly will get you up to the level where you could be and show you how to make your business a success. And payment plans are available there too. Now, I've also got two books out and more on the way, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe. You will find this on the bookshelves in all major booksellers, including all the books a million, all the Barnes and Nobles. It's right there on the shelf. Plus, you can get it on Amazon and through any independent bookseller. And you can find Radical Prayer on Amazon, and you can order it anywhere as well. So I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!